You're sitting by a campfire, minding your own business, but there's smoke in your face. You get up and move your chair for what feels like the thousandth time, but the smoke keeps following you. It turns out you're not crazy. The smoke is stalking you. So what do I mean when I say the smoke is stalking you? To answer that question, we need to cover a few things. Mainly, what is smoke and why does it rise? I always went through life thinking I knew what causes smoke. The act of burning things makes smoke. Pretty simple, right? Wrong. Think about the combustion of natural gas. If smoke came from simply burning stuff, your kitchen would fill up with smoke whenever you cooked in it. In reality, assuming you're a good cook, all you produce in your kitchen are two odorless, colorless gases. You make carbon dioxide and steam. So if burning things doesn't make smoke, what does? It turns out smoke is all the unburnt stuff. When talking about a campfire, the combustion process is usually not thorough. Instead of just CO2 and water vapor, you also get bits of unburnt material, carbon soot, tar, oils, and ash. All of those tiny particles are in the smoke. To be even more specific, they are the things that give color to what we call smoke. Now, if you're like me, this sounds nasty to you too. Much to no one's surprise, there's a laundry list of side effects that sound like they're lifted straight from some new prescription commercial. Here goes my version of a surgeon's general warning. Exposure to campfire smoke may cause burning eyes, runny nose, nasal congestion, sore throat, coughing, bronchitis, and ear infections. Campfire smoke can also worsen asthma symptoms and trigger asthma attacks. More severe side effects of campfire smoke can include miscarriages, preterm births, irregular heart rhythms, heart attacks, stroke, and heart failure. Women who are actively pregnant or are trying to get pregnant should avoid inhaling campfire smoke. You see, all of this risk stems from the microscopic particulate matter that's present in the smoke. Additionally, the smoke from a fire can contain other harmful compounds and gases. Benzene, formaldehyde, acrolein, carbon monoxide, and nitrogen oxides can all be in smoke. These can increase your risk of cancer and are a prime example of why incinerating trash is hazardous to your health. So although you might enjoy the smell of a campfire, inhaling it most definitely isn't good for you. Now let's talk about why smoke rises. When we combust something, that reaction is exothermic. That's just a fancy way to say it gives off energy. In this case, that energy is in the form of heat. So why does smoke rise? Think back to that energy, that heat we just mentioned. We created a bunch of steam. Steam is hot, so it rises due to convection. On its way, it carries all of the unburnt bits we mentioned earlier along for the ride. Great, so how come it seems like the smoke follows you instead of just rising away? Well, this traces back to two main factors. Pressure changes and shifts in the wind direction. For a flame to keep burning, it needs three things. Fuel, heat, and oxygen. The first two seem self-explanatory, so let's take a closer look at oxygen. For this video, let's consider plain old air synonymous with oxygen. For the air to reach the flame, it needs to flow through the base. Therein lies the issue. If you're sitting close to the fire, you block the path of least resistance. The air then speeds around you on its way to the fire. As this happens, it creates an area of low pressure right in front of you. Air rushes in from every direction to fill this partial vacuum. Unfortunately for you, this carries some of the smoke right to your face. Now on to the second factor, changes in the wind direction. Smoke follows the path of least resistance, meaning it goes where the wind blows. However, should you be in an area where the wind direction frequently shifts, you might be left feeling like the wind is following you. Every time you get up to move, this gets magnified. As you move about, you create vortices in your wake, similar to a speeding semi-truck. Although on a smaller scale than the vehicle, this produces areas of lower pressure that draw in the smoky air you just escaped. Between the changing wind directions and the smoke getting sucked up behind you, it's no wonder people are left feeling like the smoke is stalking them. So save me from the smoky abyss, you say. Seeing as a judge probably won't grant you a restraining order for an inanimate phenomenon, what are you left to do? There are a few things you can try to prevent the situation in the first place. You could try clicking on the like button down below if this video has been helpful to you. Seriously though, it will help it spread to more people. 
All kidding aside, you can reduce the smoke the fire creates. The amount of smoke produced can be decreased by using only dry firewood and ensuring adequate airflow for the fire. There are many approaches to placing firewood to allow for increased airflow and avoid a buildup of smoke. Two of these include a teepee when log cabin shape. As for dry firewood, I mainly am referring to three points. First, you want to reduce the moisture as damp firewood makes more steam. Second, it's also crucial to avoid freshly cut wood. The sap inside can burn, causing more smoke. Third, steer clear of using leaves and grasses. Although they make great tinder to start a fire, they're also very smoky. Now that we've tackled how much smoke our fire produces, we can move on to managing any smoke it makes. The most effective change we can make is lighting the fire on a windless night. However, since we don't live in a closed dome, this feels next to impossible in daily life. A more practical approach is to choose a location that funnels the wind along an expected path. One example is a valley where the wind is constrained to only a few directions. Additionally, picking a night where the breeze is light could be the difference between smoke gently wafting over your head or a face full of it. Now, ensuring that everyone doesn't make any pressure voids requires forethought and discipline from everyone involved. If we remove all the obstacles near the fire and sit further back, the airflow will be uniform and should allow the smoke to rise straight up. If like me, you say, why would I sit five feet back from a fire? Don't worry, I do have one other scheme you can try. If you have everyone sit at the same distance from one another and the same distance from the fire, the air disturbances created should be equal. While everyone will cause turbulence to the airflow, it should balance out since everyone causes roughly the same disruption. Just remember that every time someone moves, it all breaks down since they create a tailwind when they move. So that leaves us the option of bringing all the snacks and drinks nearby and having no one move the whole time. Though to me, that sounds like a very dull camping trip. <laughs>